Yes? Welcome, everyone, uh, to session 111, um, the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence, a multi-stakeholder initiative on trustworthy AI. My name is Inma Martinez. I'm going to moderate this session. I'm also participating as one of the panelists because of my role as chair of the multi-stakeholder expert group. I will make the introductions of the members of this panel. To my right, my colleague, Joichi Ida, who is deputy director for the G7 and G20 relations at the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications at the Government of Japan, and who is also the co-chair of the Global Partnership on AI Steering Committee. Welcome, Yoichi. And online, we have uh, my colleague, Alang Paik, who is head of the GPA Secretariat, hosted at the OECD. And from India, we have the CEO of Digital India Corporation and India AI, Mr. Abhishek Singh, at the Ministry of Electronics and IT of the Government of India. And we're also expecting a fourth member of our panel, who is Ms. Kavita Bhatia, who is Group Coordinator of Emerging Technologies Division at the Ministry of Electronics and IT at the Government of India. And the uh, order of the session intends to provide you with a scope of what uh, GPA is as a multi-stakeholder initiative of international scope and running now in its fourth year. And each of the members of the panel in their capacity as co-chairs and as organizers of the next presidency will reflect on how GPA is delivering value to the world, to the member countries, and what we hope for the future. And I would like to invite uh, our colleague, Alan Paik, who is the head of the secretariat at the OECD, who is online to start the uh, presentation with an overview of GPA as an organization. Alan, the floor is yours. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Inma, and um, it is my pleasure to uh, address you uh, today. Uh, I will give an introduction to um, GPA as a multi-stakeholder initiative on trustworthy AI. Uh, so uh, GPA is this uh, long-term initiative which is um, uh, specifically uh, dedicated to AI-related priorities. And it has a multi-stakeholder focus to convene experts from a wide range of sectors. And the mission of um, GPI is really to bring both countries on one side and experts from different uh, stakeholder groups together to support and guide the responsible adoption of AI. And uh, we, we know um, that especially in 2023, uh, this becomes of a very high relevance uh, to ground um, the adoption of AI in human rights, inclusion, diversity, gender equality, innovation, economic growth, and environmental and societal benefit, and seek to contribute concretely to the 2030 Agenda and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This has been GPI's mission since its creation in 2020, and as I said, um, in this year, it became more and more evident how important this is and um, uh, how big the, the risks are, um, in, uh, of course, in parallel to the huge opportunity which is, um, which is uh, given by, by the development of the technology. So we do have a global and inclusive membership, which is open to emerging and developing countries as well as uh, developed countries. And um, this membership is informed by the shared principles which are ref reflected in the OECD recommendation on AI, which um, is uh, today also widespread. Um, uh, G20 has also adopted uh, a similar set of uh, recommendation inspired by the OECD recommendations. So the uh, GPI members today, uh, we number 29 members. And as I have mentioned, we do have uh, an increasing number from uh, emerging and developing countries, including uh, Argentina, Brazil, India, uh, Mexico, 
uh, Senegal, uh, Turkey, um, and, and Serbia, for example. But we also do have, uh, as you see, um, most of the major uh, leaders in, in AI um, uh, technology uh, on board as uh, GPI members from the government side. Now, uh, how does um, GPI function? We do have um, a very uh, uh, elaborate governance. Uh, we have uh, uh, a ministerial council and an executive council, which are representative of the member countries. Then we do have a steering committee, which is uh, the place where um, the different stakeholders meet. So uh, where we do have representatives of both the uh, member countries and um, the uh, experts. And then we have the multi-stakeholder experts group of which um, uh, Inma is, is the chair. And um, this uh, experts group accounts for uh, expert working groups and uh, uh, currently two uh, expert support centers uh, in Paris and Montreal. And their work is also supported or will be supported in the future by the work of uh, national institutes. So institutes which will contribute to the concrete projects which um, GPI is um, putting forward. Now the uh, GPI Council, as I mentioned, has uh, two, pa uh, two parts. It has the Ministerial Council, which meets once per year. And our next meeting is in uh, New Delhi and, and um, our colleague uh, from, from India, uh, Mr. Abhishek Singh will, will, will talk about this uh, forthcoming summit, which is very important. The Executive Council meets at the working level three times per year and, um, and you know, um, gives um, guidance to the GPI Secretariat on internal processes, on project financing, uh, um, work plan, and approves the GPI budget. So uh, the Council this year, uh, the lead chair is Japan. Uh, the incoming chair is India, who will become the lead chair for the next year. And the outgoing chair is France, who has been the, the lead chair uh, last year. The steering committee, as I mentioned, is the place where all the stakeholders meet in this multi-stakeholder initiative. So we do have uh, at, in the steering committee um, six representatives of the government and six representatives of the um, experts. Within the representatives of governments, uh, we, we have uh, three representatives, which are the, the co-chairs of the initiative. We have two additional government representatives appointed by the Executive Council. And then we have a, a specific seat, which is uh, reserved for, the, uh, for an emerging or developing country, which is also appointed by the Executive Council. And this, um, this shows the uh, commitment uh, which uh, GPI has to support uh, membership from uh, such countries. And then uh, steering committee also does meet uh, sometimes in the extended format where, where all the uh, GPI members are invited um, to uh, uh, participate in the deliberations. Um, I think one, one important point is, is the project funding. How are the projects funded at, at GPI? So we do have the, the baseline budget envelope for projects, which is, uh, has been historically um, provided by France and Canada, who were um, at, the, at the origin, uh, the founding members of GPI. Uh, this is going to be complemented now by, uh, by a mechanism through GPI uh, full, a pool seat funding where all the countries will be able to, to contribute. Um, then the second, uh, the second part of um, the project funding comes from in-kind contributions uh, through national AI institutes who can contribute uh, in-kind computing power, uh, data resources, human resources, um, et cetera, in, into GPI projects. And then finally, we do have also partnerships and partnerships can be from um, you know, both in-kind and financial um, uh, uh, contributions to specific projects in the, in the GPI work plan. Um, I would like to, to mention also the GPI webpage, which I would encourage you to, uh, to visit. Uh, you will find a lot of exciting uh, information there. Uh, you will find our new reports 
Um, uh, we have two new reports which are featured on our webpage, which are recent and very, um, very actual. Uh, one is about uh, generative AI jobs and, and policy response. And the other one is about AI foundation models and detection mechanisms saying that, you know, whatever new foundation model is put out there needs to provide a detection mechanism which would um, help us identify that that text has actually been, uh, pro um, you know, uh, produced by an AI. Um, you will find information about the GPI uh, summit uh, at the GMI summit in New Delhi. We will uh, we will be launching many many more new reports which are just uh, being finalized right now. So so watch this space for for the new exciting results from the GPI experts. And, um, and, and uh, also you will find information about uh, the G7 uh, commitments to advancing generative AI policy where, where uh, this collaboration does include uh, GPI. And finally, um, you will find information about the global challenge to build uh, trust in uh, the age of generative AI. We know how uh, fragile trust is uh, today uh, about the proliferation of uh, fake news and uh, big threats uh, to, to our democracies and, 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 and so on. Um, so we do want to have this, uh, this global challenge. This is uh, a big initiative which is um, launched uh, in collaboration with the OECD, with UNESCO, with AI Commons, IEEE, and VDE, and uh, uh, we are actually right now in a call for partners. So uh, a call to all of you who are listening in today, if you are interested to collaborate on this, um, uh, on this very exciting initiative, please do uh, click on uh, this partner inquiry form just very briefly to explain what, it, what this is about. It is, it is in three phases. Uh, in the first phase, we do want to identify promising ideas, how to um, have um, you know, policy and technology solutions for building trust in the age of generative AI. Um, those uh, ideas which uh, do show uh, potential will get some resources to build a prototype in the second cycle. And, and, and the successful prototype then will be encouraged to pilot and scale in the third cycle. So it is a very exciting new um, a transversal initiative with global partners. Uh, please feel free to um, apply and partner with us. Thank you, Inma, and over to you. Thank you so much, Alan. Um, I'd like to move now to um, a very important aspect of what the GPAY is, which is our mission and our vision. And I would like to invite uh, my colleague Joichi Ida to, to present to us GPAY's mission and vision and really um, what the Executive Council has uh, done to address you know, the emerging challenges that AI is presenting. Uh, with the dynamism that is required during the presidency of Japan, as well as um, how Japan in this year has been steering uh, the GPA mission in a very, very tough year and conflicting year with lots of work to do, especially from the G7 perspective of having to come up with, uh, with a Hiroshima process. Thank you, Joichi. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Imma, uh, for your very kind uh, uh, introduction. And uh, uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Yoichi Ida, uh, uh, actually uh, former, formerly uh, Deputy Director General for G7 and G20. At this moment, uh, I'm working as Assistant uh, Vice Minister at the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. And uh, uh, my uh, work is uh, mainly looking at the multilateral uh, uh, digital policy making, uh, uh, including uh, GPA, OECD, G7, G20, and also uh, IGF uh, 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 all together. And this is a very, very busy e year for us. And uh, But uh, at the same time, uh, we are very happy to see uh, different frameworks are, are, uh, are being synergized with each other, uh, not only uh, around AI, but also other uh, digital uh, policy making, including data flow or infrastructure and whatever. So uh, 
uh, with regard to the uh, GPay uh, 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 operation, uh, uh, we uh, uh, took uh, the uh, lead chair uh, position uh, uh, in the uh, late uh, uh, month of last year, and uh, we are uh, working as the lead chair for 2023. GPay has a very unique uh, uh, structure, not only in the organizational structure as uh, presented by uh, uh, Alan uh, uh, in his presentation, but also uh, we, uh, in the process uh, structure. Uh, the uh, uh, lead chair uh, country hosts uh, its summit meeting uh, in the beginning of uh, the, on the very first day of the uh, 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 chair uh, uh, tenure. Uh, so it happened uh, uh, late uh, November last year, uh, and on that very day uh, we uh, succeeded the lead chair position from France, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, put uh, our uh, effort uh, to uh, succeed the successful GPA's work and also uh, or even. Uh, 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 promote uh, further. Uh, uh, it's a very important uh, 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 responsibility in uh, promoting a global AI ecosystem. Actually, the uh, GPA uh, 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 Executive Council, uh, the uh, all member countries uh, are working together uh, on how to promote uh, the uh, responsible deployment of AI technology into the uh, society through four different uh, uh, working group topics, uh, which are responsible AI and uh, data governance and uh, uh, the uh, uh, future of work and the commercialization and the innovation uh, through uh, AI technology in the society. So uh, we, uh, the government members are closely uh, working uh, together with the private sector experts uh, to promote uh, uh, those uh, projects uh, uh, in, in four categories. And uh, we, uh, as a, a lead chair, uh, Japan wanted to promote uh, uh, the uh, uniqueness of GPay and also uh, uh, to improve the weakness of GPay. So in the beginning of our chair uh, uh, tenure, uh, we recognized through our discussion in previous years, the uh, uh, some of the challenges for GPay would be first, uh, how to strengthen uh, the uh, messaging or uh, delivering uh, our message to the rest of the world. And uh, uh, in order to achieve that, uh, we decided to uh, elaborate uh, the first uh, uh, minister's declaration uh, uh, to be uh, delivered by the ministers at uh, uh, GPA summit last year. That is uh, one instrument. And uh, secondly, uh, we wanted to add uh, uh, the uh, uh, a very temporary uh, uh, topic uh, uh, for AI uh, development uh, as uh, uh, AI for resilient society. So we added uh, uh, AI for resilient society for uh, priority uh, topics for GPA activities. And then we also uh, wanted to uh, uh, strengthen the opportunity for experts to bring their message uh, to the rest of the world through the uh, lot of events uh, associated to the uh, uh, GPA uh, uh, Minister's Summit uh, 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 in the same venue uh, in Tokyo. So uh, we had uh, more than 20 side events where many uh, experts uh, uh, presented their own views and also do some exchanges on how uh, we could work together to, to uh, promote a, a responsible de a deployment uh, of AI technologies in, in our society. These are the three major uh, uh, focuses uh, where uh, our uh, lead chair uh, 
uh, lead uh, chair presidency uh, uh, worked on and uh, I hope uh, these uh, three uh, uh, emphasis uh, contributed uh, uh, to to some extent to the development of uh, uh, GPEG uh, 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 work uh, this year. And we also uh, wanted to create a stronger synergy uh, between GPEG work and other uh, international work streams. That, that is why we picked up uh, 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 the AI uh, topic as part of the G7 uh, 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 agenda this year and uh, we discussed uh, uh, AI governance, global AI governance as part of our uh, 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 working group uh, uh, discussion and uh, uh, we uh, agreed on uh, further work to uh, uh, build up uh, the uh, global uh, 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 governance uh, uh, policy for uh, generative AI and in order to do that uh, we uh, have agreed that uh, we should work uh, uh, closely with international organizations including GPEI and uh, OECD and UNESCO uh, to understand better how uh, generative AI uh, would support uh, uh, the human society and what kind of uh, risks and the challenges may come up and how we could uh, uh, address those potential risks and the challenges through the collaboration uh, uh, with international organizations and experts working there. So uh, I hope uh, I stop there, but uh, uh, these are the efforts uh, 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 by Japan as uh, lead uh, chair presidency. And uh, uh, I uh, hope uh, these uh, efforts uh, uh, will be uh, succeeded by uh, uh, India uh, as lead chair next year. And of course, uh, we Japan continue to, to, to make uh, a contribution uh, to GPAY work uh, uh, next year and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yuichi. Uh, as a co-chair of the steering committee um, and, and colleague of Yuichi throughout this year, I have to say that um, the Tokyo Summit was really probably one of the uh, best events I've ever attended. I think as a scientist myself, uh, I felt that the sessions, not just the ones that the, the members of the multi-stakeholder expert group presented, but also the peripheral sessions from academic and for industry that came to the summit were truly exciting and really to the point of the times because AI these days grows exponentially, not linearly, and everybody has to react in, in, in ways that are much faster than before and with better solutions and forward thinking. So thanks very much. Very grateful for all the work that Japan has done for GPA this year. And I'd like to uh, proceed and present the other pillar of GPA, which is the uh, multi-stakeholder expert group, which is uh, the group I joined in 2021 when the government of Spain, one of the members, nominated me. And I entered one of the working groups, which was innovation and commercialization of artificial intelligence for small to medium enterprises. And last year, during our elections, I then uh, took the chair of chair. This is a very singular uh, community because it's the first time that the AI community of not just academics, uh, but also uh, industry, uh, AI scientists, uh, lawyers, uh, civil uh, servants, uh, organizations working on ethics, um, trade unions have come together to work together on very, very specific initiatives. And this puts us in a position where we serve at the pleasure of the members, but at the same time, the members gives us the flexibility to propose approaches. How would we as scientists, as AI people, would deal with some of these challenges? And this synergy is what makes the GPA truly special and a first for many governments where it comes to AI advisory. And the makeup and the fabric of the MEC is quite varied, um, 
more than half of uh, the expert group is composed of AI scientists, true AI scientists. And then we are complemented with other people from trade unions, from civil society, from industry that also have long careers in artificial intelligence. I would say the average age is above 40 for sure, if not more. And because the membership at present is uh, with, with a huge component of European countries. Well, the countries, the members nominate experts. That's why we have so many European uh, uh, experts in the group. But we are also expanding to bring uh, experts, not just from the membership, but when we work on projects that require specific skills, we invite other members of the AI community to work with us as specialists. And this is one of the keenest efforts that we have for uh, these years to come, which is to bring the voices of developing nations, of emerging markets, of other scientists that do incredibly valuable work that complements our own work. The gender gap is not uh, too bad, I would say. We are making huge inroads in stabilizing this 15% difference uh, because one of the points of governance that we have in the, in the MEG, as we call it, is to ensure representation. And not just between the genders, but also geographies. Every working group has two co-chairs and we try to bring people from different continents. And what is it that we do with lots and lots of calls on video platforms because all of the experts are based in their home countries. And we are supported by the two expert support centers, which are SEMIA in uh, Montreal and INRIA in France. And this is probably one of the best uh, elements of you know, the governance of GPA that is decentralized. And at the same time, each member, in this case, France and Canada, puts forth the centers of innovation and research to our advantage, to our support. And we organize summits. Uh, we have done uh, summits online in 2020. We did it for the first time in person in Paris in 2021. We did it in Tokyo last year. And we very much look forward to the summit in India this year. And as my colleague Alan mentioned, we uh, engage with other organizations in common goals and projects like the Global Challenge, which Alan explained earlier. Now, why GPay engaged the AI community has a very simple answer. Between 2015 and 2018, the advancements in artificial intelligence grew exponentially. We had huge advances in neural networks, in the transformer modeling within uh, language models. Uh, we brought uh, computer vision, AI-driven drug therapy development, level five automation in cars. It was a, a huge movement of advancement in AI that really put a new perspective to almost 70 years of artificial intelligence. And that's why the member, the, the original founding members uh, decided we need an association, an international initiative that will be able to understand this massive exponential growth and transformation and governments to really get on a roadmap of dealing with it with innovative approaches. And GPAY, because it's an initiative, has a governance that is very singular. So we have a federated government, governance. Every country puts their support from their local leading institutions. And every member of the GPA, from a country perspective, brings the individual and collective leadership, exactly what we do in the expert group. And we look for multi-stakeholder equity, because we know that AI has to be an AI for all, and this is why not just the council brings new members from all geographies of the world, but the experts do the same. And one of the things that differentiates our projects with other uh, projects around artificial intelligence in the world is that our mandate, how we have been mandated by the council is come up with solutions, come up with real actionable solutions that go beyond policy. Yes, you can advise on policy, of course you do, 
but bring solutions that we can implement, that we can roll out in our, in our global markets and also find standards for all of us to, to agree upon. So the way that we understood that mandate, especially in 2023, when the emergence of generative AI really brought a new perspective and enormous challenges to society and governments was bringing the members and the experts together. So this is something very singular. We created a town hall in May in which the experts invited all of the member countries to attend. And we explained how we, the AI community, understood the risks, but also the opportunities for language models, foundation models, generative AI in general. And it was a town hall format. Anybody could ask anything. And we made it very free, free flow, so that for the first time, it was a conversation, it was interactive. Um, in September, we hosted the first innovation uh, workshop for members and their delegations and our experts in uh, Semia at Montreal. And what is it that you do in an innovation workshop? Was you challenged ideas. You address if everybody understands the same when we discuss, for example, risks. Uh, are the risks for a member country in Europe the same as one in the Americas? Do we all prioritize the same challenges in the same way? So it was bringing the existing roadmap of challenges, risks, and projects that the Council and the GBA uh, expert group had but we put it through the lens of, are we all on the same page? Have things changed that we need to modify some of these assumptions and hypotheses? So we really behaved as artificial intelligence scientists. And it was really successful because everybody felt that for the first time, governments and experts were working together for two days in the same room, as you can see from the pictures throwing ideas, challenging ideas, and agreeing on approaches. And the way we operate is on a four-pillar structure. The big themes of artificial intelligence, as you all know, is to ensure that it's done responsibly, that it's trustworthy, that it carries the ethics of the future that we want for our people. We also concern ourselves with how the future of work will evolve with artificial intelligence coming into industry and society. And then the pillar of AI is data. So of course, data governance is one of the most active uh, working groups in uh, the MEG and innovation and commercialization of AI. AI finally is becoming a product and a service, is coming into industry, is coming to the hands of people, and we need to ensure that the service level agreements, that the human centricity by design really comes with it. As uh, one of our experts um, uh, mentioned, uh, AI should come to us in a state that is already safe that we don't need to make it safe because it's dangerous. We should really strive for an AI that comes to us in the best possible state. So how do we respond to the challenges that the member governments uh, undergo on, on, on a monthly basis, I would say? Well, one of the big challenges uh, was presented to us by the Hiroshima process in May. Um, together with the OECD, we were uh, called upon to support uh, the vision that the G7 had as to how we needed to act quickly and steady and on, on a very solid ground uh, with regards to uh, generative AI, advanced AI. And uh, immediately we looked around and we realized that we were already working on absolutely all of the points that were coming out of that mandate, out of that call. So uh, as you can see from the list, obviously taking measures to, uh, to ensure that the risks are met and, and addressed. Um, we uh, also uh, need to mitigate vulnerabilities, you know, how it comes to market. Um, what are the, uh, the capabilities and the limitations that, that uh, something coming to market in inappropriate ways we could create. So 
the way we respond to all of these objectives is in a variety of ways. In some ways, we produce uh, ideas such as sandboxing for responsible AI. In others, um, we look at what Alan mentioned, you know, detectors, uh, real tech that actually uh, addresses, you know, fake dissemination of misinformation, etc. And as you can see uh, from these columns, the elements of risk and concern uh, listed by the G7, we already had projects operating in the different spheres of what needs to be done. And if you uh, want to have a deeper view of what these typical projects are, for example, one of the most exciting ones which actually has been presented uh, in the EU Parliament and in, in, in fact is being incorporated into the amendments to the AI Act of February 2020 um, and also presented in the US Congress is, can we create detection mechanisms um, in order to uh, ensure that when this type of AI is commercialized, it already comes with detection mechanisms that either people themselves can action and test, is this thing a fake news, but also the social media platforms. And this is real tech addressing a technological problem. It's not a policy, it's not a framework, it's something very like an asset. And in the innovation and commercialization, we have a project that has already entered beta, which is a portal that has been launched in Singapore, in France, in Germany, and in Poland as the beta test beds, in which small and medium enterprises of all sectors can consult which AI solutions are appropriate for some of their challenges, for some of their gaps. And not only that, but who are the AI solutions providers at their local markets. So this is another asset uh, that is put in the hands of industry. And one of the most exciting projects that is really addressing something incredibly hard to frame is can we make IP out of artificial intelligence? And we started this project in 2022 and it had a fantastic 20, year 23 because we then organized workshops uh, in conjunction and with the support of other research institutes like uh, Max Planck in Germany and also at Duke University in Washington DC and it's really addressing contract law. And contract law is very hard because the way contracts are drafted and drafted is an art. And they have to have, you know, the proper address in the proper language and really provide guarantees. So when it comes to intellectual property, um, the contract laws are expanding. And I invite you to follow this project because in 2024 we will create um, an incubator. So if you work in uh, IP law and your focus is artificial intelligence, please contact us because um, we will be running this incubator in 24. And the next steps uh, for other projects, for example, this is the one that I, I lead because this is the one I created when I joined, uh, really encompass uh, all of the nations. Agriculture is one of the pillars of our civilization. Artificial intelligence is creating prosperity and new ways to ensure that arable land doesn't decrease and water resources are preserved and that we really can feed 10 billion people in sustainable ways. And regulating AI as well, you know, what is the landscape of AI regulation across the board, how each nation is dealing with their own AI regulation, can we find standards, this is another exciting project as well as the future of work. The future of work is very vital because there is much misunderstanding as to what AI brings to industry and society and there's much fear as to uh, perhaps being relegated to a secondary role as humanity and as workers. And this is one of the working groups that has the most activity. Um, they have uh, projects for 2024 in which they undergo projects with university students in South America. They will uh, see the impact of generative AI in Espanol. Um, and they will try to get down to areas where we can learn from countries in development, as well as um, how the working conditions of uh, employees and workers are changing with the rise of AI within their 
companies. This is just a picture. I hope that you can visit our website and get familiar with the rest of our projects. And like I said before, um, we are a growing organization and uh, the strength of the collective is because of what the individuals bring to us. And now it is my great pleasure to uh, introduce to you um, our future presidency lead uh, in GPA, which is the government of India. And for that, we have with us uh, our colleague in the steering committee, Mr. Abhishek Singh. I believe he is online from India. The floor is your. Oh, yes, he's there. I, I think I need help from the uh, AV team in managing. I should not be the the big screen now. It's probably. Can you please give the floor to Mr. Abhishek, who is online? I can see him. And disconnect me. He's on mute. Okay. I think Abhishek, you are now able to speak. A little bit loud. Um, Abhishek, could you speak louder? We don't hear much. No, nothing comes through. Okay. How about now? Am I audible now? Now you are. Thank you so much and for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what the glitch was, but anyways. But what I wanted to say is my colleague Kavita Bhatia is here. She will be making a presentation with regard to the summit that we'll be hosting in December. So Kavita, can you make the share the slides and make the presentation? Yeah. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all of you. I'll just share my screen. Is the screen visible? Is the, is screen, the screen visible? visible? Yes, yes. Yes, Kavita, yeah. it's visible and you could uh, switch on your camera also, maybe. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'll be able to because this running from the one to... I'll do it afterwards. Um, so India's vision for AI has been very important is that we understand this, this technology brings a lot of uh, focuses on uh, emerging technologies, but we are wanting to ensure that the technology will bring social and economic growth, which will be in line with the inclusive development. In fact, our Honorable Prime Minister has been always saying that we need AI, uh, we need to make AI in India and make AI work for India. And he also believes that the technology should be rooted with the principles of Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas, which means that benefit for everyone and working with everyone. So this is the basic vision of India for AI. In fact, uh, we have a very simple approach because you all know that India is a very large country and we know that AI has the potential to improve the public service delivery by overcoming the administrative efficiency, by bringing more efficiency in the administrative procedures and keeping citizen in the focal point so that the services which we develop with the help of AI should be beneficial to the citizen. And also, AI AI needs to overcome the traditional barrier of uh, uh, not having inclusivity. So we want to have it more inclusive for the development of large scale social transformation solutions. Uh, as I said that uh, AI enables the policy develop developers so that they are able to take the right decision based on the data so that the decisions taken for the development of social benefits 
should be uh, meant for the citizen and he should be able to get whatever the benefit he is entitled to. Uh, in fact, this is not what AI should stop at. It should also empower the citizen so that he knows what is his entitlement and what are the benefits which he's supposed to get. And he should approach the government so that he is not debarred or not uh, having the uh, benefits which he is supposed to get. And the AI provides the innovative models for the governments so that we can have innovation for public good and create new economic opportunities. So this is the main focus and the approach which India is taking forward. And uh, uh, we already have come up with a strategy for AI, which basically we focuses on democratizing the access of AI resources. The AI resources, which we mean is the uh, streamlined access to good quality data sets for research and innovation, having the access to the compute, and most important, having the skilled resources so that the innovation can be brought out into the system. So with this principles in our uh, background, we have come up with a comprehensive program on AI, which focuses on these uh, three pillars, as well as one of the most important pillar which we have kept in this program is the National Center on AI, where we plan to uh, implement 10 society uh, solutions across the country so that we can see the benefit what AI brings for the nation. Um, responsible AI is also one of the pillar, as I said, which is very important because the solution should not cause harm to the uh, human being. So we have already detailed out the principles of responsible AI. We have worked on the operationalization mechanism and we have also gone ahead with one of the use case of using these principles in the facial recognition technology. As I said that India is a very large country. We have 22 uh, uh, languages which we speak and more around 1000 plus dialects. So we understand that this uh, AI should bring the inclusivity and should also enable the citizens to get the services in the vernacular language. So we have already created a platform which is a multimodal AI platform called Bhashini, which will which is built to speech to speech machine translation system. In fact, in G20, we have showcased this solution and we have also added uh, 10 uh, international language which has been showcased in G20. Um, the other important aspect which we have worked we, on the framework for the fairness assessment, because the solutions which are brought to the market or which are taken for the implementation should be made sure that they are fair and should not have any biases attached to it. So we have, uh, we have come up with the framework and along with BIS, we are also working on the other standards which are very important for developing a successful AI solutions. Skilling, as I said, that we have already made a note of it and we understand skilling is very important. So we are trying to cater to the skilling aspects and at all the levels. One, at a very initial level, when the uh, when a school child, um, when a, ch ch a child is in the school, we have wanted to make him understand about what AI is so that we can demystify the uh, harm which they, he has been uh, told that the AI can bring. The second level is that we want to reskill and upskill our IT professionals so that they are up to the mark in the era of AI, so that they are able to uh, tackle to the problems which AI might bring about the job losses. And the third the area which we have tackled is the researchers. We understand that we need to have more researchers so that we can develop our own LLMs so we have, tried, we have come up with a program where we are financially supporting the PhD students in the area of AI and emerging. So we are trying to cater to the skilling aspects in all the three levels so that not, not a single layer is being left out. Uh, with regard to the principles, uh, with regard to the vision of AI, this year as a lead, uh, we are going to take the lead chair in December. However, we have started working with uh, for GPI right as a, incoming chair and we will be hosting our annual summit in December, which has been talked about by Inma as well as Ellen, that December we are going to have a summit where we will make global policy um, makers to come and have a more discussions on the responsible AI. So our main focus 
focus as an incoming chair this year has been to increase the member and the expert collaboration and in this regard we have already had um, uh, we have already had a, a convenings on three of the working groups which inma has showed data governance innovation and commercialization responsible ai where we have brought the ecosystem of ai to understand what the gpi experts have been doing and we also wanted the uh, industry to come and share their experiences and um, vision which they want from the gpi so this we have already done and fourth the uh, um convening we'll be having shortly on future of work the most important thing which we plan to do it in our presidency is that we wanted to make gpi as an independent identity as a multilateral initiative so that the gpi can be the point of contact for all the ai related um, uh, information or uh, standards or frameworks uh, as what who has been in the case of health this is what we want to do it in our presidency and we also want to enhance the uh, our advocacy efforts so that we will bring more visibility of gpi outputs and also we would like the gpi work which they have done so that we can proliferate and adopt those work which the gpi has been doing in the last 4 years and also one thing which we want trees participating but we wanted to enhance this membership so that we can bring wide variety of experts which have a different national and regional views and experience so that we have a holistic view of ai in the world across and last but not the least we want to promote the equitable access to the critical ai research and innovation which is compute data algorithms software experts and other ai related resources to the uh, countries which don't have the access to so that we have this equitable ai research and innovation access to everyone so this is our vision for the uh, our presidency and we will be hosting a summit in december in india in new delhi with this i will like to thank all of you and will come out of my presentation thank you thank you so much thank you thank you um, kavita thank you kavita just a minute inma thank you kavita for laying down the vision and the plan that we have for the gpa summit we are looking forward to hosting all of you in delhi from the 12th to the 14th of december and as kavita mentioned like uh, apart from the focusing on the themes for the gpa and the working groups and getting all the stakeholders all the experts coming here to join it we are also having a few other uh, add ons to the summit in which like there will be ai expo in which we are getting startups from all across the world to come and show their ai based solutions that they are there we will be having an ai game changers that we have launched we have shared the information with all of you so if there are startups who are building any solutions related to ai any dimension of ai if they want to participate in that the last date of it has been extended from 15th of october to 15th of november we would like you to share it with the relevant stakeholder community with regard to the ai game changers and we would also have a lot of side events which will focus on various themes of ai so if there are any member countries or any other stakeholders who are represented at the igf would want to contribute to the discussions in the side events at the gpa summit would look forward to hearing from you look forward to getting uh, uh, getting your involvement your participation because the way the summit is being planned in india is that we want to make it like the go to just like the internet governance forum is the go to place for uh, issues related to internet governance that we all do and we all look forward to such events which are held annually simply the gpa as the prime body with regard to artificial intelligence will bring together all nations all stakeholders civil society non government organizations industry academia to this uh, partnership so gpa needs to evolve into that we are working towards that and we are also working with the secretariat and member countries with regard to how the gpa will be expanded so look forward to getting all your views and getting your participation in the gpa summit in december thank you so much uh, abhishek and kavita thank you so much for uh, showing us uh, what is to come in 24 um i like to move to the uh, discussion now um and i want to remind our audience that we will have 15 minutes of q and a that you can use the chat or you can make the questions here in the room in person but first um i like to start with um uh joichi ida um you always uh, talk about strengthening gpa um can you can you give us some highlights as to uh 
why you firmly believe in that and what it is to come in that respect. Okay, thank you very much for the question. And uh, uh, yes, uh, we uh, strongly believe that the strength uh, and uniqueness of GPA uh, exists in the uh, expert-led uh, 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 structure. And uh, uh, multi-stakeholderism is uh, uh, the center of the value. So uh, 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 ideally, the government uh, 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 and other stakeholders should support the private sector experts who are working in the project-based activities through working group uh, uh, works. And uh, uh, they, their work is uh, now supported by two expert support centers uh, located in uh, Montreal and uh, in Paris. So uh, uh, in order to strengthen the uh, GPAID uh, value and uh, 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 function, uh, we would like to strengthen the support system uh, to expert activities. And uh, uh, that is why we are proposing to add uh, expert support center in Tokyo. So we have uh, uh, proposed uh, this proposal to establish uh, and add new expert support center in Tokyo uh, at uh, 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 Executive Council this year. And uh, uh, we believe the proposal was welcomed generally. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we need to go through the discussion at steering committee and the minister, uh, ministerial council. But uh, once uh, it is approved, uh, we would like to to uh, uh, operationalize the concept uh, of third uh, uh, expert uh, support center. Uh, uh, in order to do that, uh, we uh, at the same time need to uh, 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 prepare uh, on our side uh, 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 to uh, uh, bring uh, some financial and uh, personal resources uh, to uh, uh, manage the uh, center and we are now internally uh, uh, discussing uh, uh, across uh, the government uh, how uh, we could do that. Uh, of course, we need uh, authorization as government uh, 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 to, to, to bring this in, in action. And uh, uh, that is uh, one of the, uh, of the ideas uh, we are uh, 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 real, uh, we, we want to realize, and also uh, we are uh, trying to to uh, uh, promote uh, the visibility and the awareness uh, uh, among people on GPA's uh, activity, and uh, we hope uh, this will be uh, promoted through the closer uh, collaboration between GPA and the Hiroshima AI process where we are discussing how we could uh, uh, promote and materialize uh, project-based activities to uh, accumulate some evidences uh, on what kind of measures and uh, practices uh, might uh, 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 work uh, uh, to address uh, some of the uh, potential risks and the challenges brought by generative AI and the foundation models. And also, uh, we may uh, do some project uh, 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 on uh, to, to understand better how we could uh, responsibly uh, deploy uh, generative AI and the foundation model into the society. And these uh, uh, topics and uh, uh, project can be uh, uh, implemented through the newly established uh, 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 expert support center in Tokyo. That is uh, one of the ideas uh, we are now uh, trying to promote, and uh, I hope uh, this will uh, contribute to the uh, 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 higher uh, 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 scaling up of uh, uh, GPA uh, 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 function. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joichi. Um, I'm really delighted to hear uh, this uh, because, as I mentioned earlier, the strength of GPA resides in the multi-stakeholder equity and the decentralized and federated governance. Um, and nothing would delight me more than having an expert group in Tokyo. Um, I'd like to uh, ask uh, something to uh, Abhishek Singh uh, that 
It's also super exciting because we are all looking forward to having India in the president seat, in the lead seat. And I would like to ask him, um, every time that we have met and, and you have come over uh, to the working groups and you have looked at the projects, um, what do you feel is probably the, uh, the significant difference between our projects and, and your agenda? As, as CEO of the digital agency in India uh, under a very visionary uh, uh, mandate from, from your president. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Inma. And uh, I must uh, straight away mention that one key value that we get as being part of the you know, GPA and uh, getting to interact with the multi-stakeholder group, the Center for Excellence at uh, Montreal and at Paris and interacting with the experts who are all working on various projects with the four working groups that we have, is that we get a lot of insight with regard to what more can be done. As you rightly mentioned, India has been the leading country when it comes to implementation of digital public infrastructure projects. We have implemented certain digital India, as we call it, the digital India as a brand, but the digital project we implemented at population scale, whether it's the identity platform, which has got more than a billion people registered, we have almost 70 million authentication that happen on a daily basis uh, or our digital payments ecosystem, which is like one of the world's most robust and one's most largest uh, digital payments uh, uh, platform with more than 10 billion transactions that happen every month. So the numbers are huge or our document exchange platform, which we call DigiLocker, which has more than 200 billion registered users. So in India, whatever we do is at a scale. But now as we move on and try to leverage artificial intelligence, we are seeing that there's a lot of value addition that happens when you kind of bring in a layer of AI to the digital transformation projects that we have implemented. And when we do that, when we say, for example, use face recognition for authenticating uh, people, we are using a very simple AI tool. But then all the issues related to ethics and responsible AI come in. When it, when it lead to more and more adoption of AI, the future of work comes in very, uh, very, uh, as a very important thing. We have a large number of population, almost 50 million Indians are working in the IT and ITES sector. But the way AI is coming in, some of these jobs will be impacted. So we need to work with the global community. We need to work with the experts. We need to work with other nationalities with regard to, especially coming up with framework, the guidelines for regulating AI, ensuring that innovation and regulation go hand in hand, ensuring that we are able to provide equitable access to AI, ensuring that we are able to democratize AI, and most importantly, bring in an era of explainable AI. So very often these things cannot be done by only one nation alone or, uh, or a few corporations alone. There is a, a significant concentration of the, of the AI technology in a few companies in a few nations. But if we need to harness the benefits of this technology, we need to take it down further. We need to ensure that there is access to compute, there are frameworks with regard to data governance, the frameworks with regard to leveraging the data that can be used for building AI models, and there are solutions that can be used for population scale societal problems. Like, for example, how do we build AI solutions for solving healthcare issues? How do we use AI to detect tuberculosis or cancer? How do we use AI for helping farmers across the country? And when we do that, the real benefits of AI will come in. And uh, the low and medium income countries are going to benefit a lot in doing that. So what we are doing is that integrating the artificial intelligence and advancement in the field of AI with the digital public infrastructure projects that we have implemented and work with the global community in order to fast forward that. And whatever we have learned, whatever we have built or whatever we are building together, it becomes part of the global DPI repository. As the G20 declaration mentioned about building a global DPI repository, the AI solutions will also become part of the global repository. And many of these solutions that will be developed evolved in cooperation with other member countries will become available for adoption and replication across the world. So that's the value we see as being part of the GPA and the benefits that we get in engaging with the real experts, real technologists, real engineers, and real social scientists who are working in this field. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I uh, completely second everything that you said and something very important that both of you have mentioned uh, and especially in the themes of each presidency, resilient society, making empowering people to respond to challenges and then making AI uh, equitable and accessible to all. 
this is the century of human centricity, putting people at the center of everything that we create so that we can really create a future for everyone. I'd like to open the floor to anyone online or present in the room to have the chance and the great opportunity to make any questions to uh, uh, Joichi and Abhishek or myself. So if we have any questions, please uh, raise your hand and somebody will bring you a mic. Or let me just check anything happening online. Uh, chat. Yes, we have one question over there. Can I? I'll give you the mic myself. Please uh, let us know who you are and your organization. The, the switch. Great, how's that? Perfect, okay. So um, firstly, just want to say thank you so much for the, the great presentation, found it really helpful. Uh, my name's Ed Teller, I'm from uh, Amazon Web Services from the Global AI Policy Team. Um, I thought the the slides were all great, and the one which I thought was particularly interesting actually was seeing how uh, GPay's work streams were being mapped against the Hiroshima um, commitments. So I thought actually I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about that. Sort of uh, firstly, sort of how you see that work sort of going forward. Is it likely we're going to see reporting against those um, the Hiroshima principles? So I think that's a really helpful lens uh, to understand the work, and also just in terms of like how you're thinking about partnerships as well and collaboration. Uh, against those work streams too. So yeah, those are my two questions, but thanks very much for the really helpful presentation. Thank you. Um, we have an ongoing interaction with the council. Um, at the inception, the member countries exposed their concerns, the challenges that they felt that they needed to address. And then we looked at those uh, concerns and challenges and from our perspective of engaged scientists, because we all work back home at our universities, labs, industry, and we decided, okay, this is how we would address that issue. And we would propose projects and, and, and things to develop. And then the council funds it, and we set ourselves to deliver uh, the specific initiatives, the specific projects, some of them, uh, are ongoing, some others were uh, completed within a period of two years. And all of this is shared back to the member countries and also publicly, because uh, all of these reports as to how we are progressing are hang on our website. And our approach to the projects is we cannot be the only ones working on this. So as Yoichi rightly said, the strength of GPay is that once we get our mandate, we look at the world and we ask ourselves, is there an expert somewhere that we should invite to work with us in this project? And those are the specialists. So for example, in my agriculture project, immediately I reached out to Naro in Japan, who is the agency that uh, looks at all the technification of agriculture. And the director general himself is my specialist. And he comes to the meetings every two weeks and he has brought information, insights, thoughts, strategies, and that's how we work. And this is how the community really brings real insights because it comes directly from the places where AI is being created. And we are expanding, and now we're moving into IP law. And we move to civil society and ethical societies and companies that uh, think about service-led innovation when it comes to putting products in the world. What are the principles that you are guided by when you create a product to be safe? And that's, that's really the uniqueness of this initiative, which truly is unique because there's nothing like it and we hope to strengthen it with the support of our member countries and their leadership and their own research institutes and innovation centers. That's why it's decentralized and federated. Thanks so much for the question. Thank you, we have another one here. Let me just pass you the mic. 
Good afternoon, good morning. My name is Paola Galvez. I'm Peruvian, right now based in Paris. I just finished my graduate internship at the OECD and my master's in Oxford. Uh, former advisor to the Secretary of Data Transformation on Peru, where I helped over, over I know, I, actually I oversaw the design of the AI national strategy. And I have one question, uh, because personally I'm a, gender advocate uh, in whatever I do. So I saw in the um, chapter or, or initiative that you have in Responsible AI, there is uh, an activity number five, creating diversity and gender equality in AI. If you please could uh, explain or expand a bit on, on it. Uh, also ask uh, India, uh, the, the future chairs, if because I saw the, their principles and it, it was really fantastic to hear their uh, optimism and how they want to position GPA as the um, institution or, or multilateral uh, initiative. initiative to uh, really come to when we need expertise. And if you will be open to develop an initiative that works in bridging the gender gap in AI that we have in the world. And my second question would be how, coming from Peru, I, I am happy to see many developing countries, but maybe what are the requirements to have uh, other countries as members, speaking uh, of Peru, that we, ha we are the first one to have a law on AI for social purposes. I think that would be something that our prime minister would be interested to, uh, but I would like to know uh, what are the requirements so that I can come to them and, and tell them how initiatives, uh, how incredible initiatives you guys have. Thank you. So the, gen the gender question is for me or for Abhishek? I can take that, no worries. Thank you, Abhishek. The floor is you can yours. Give you a yeah. Thank you. In fact, uh, I really thank, uh, I didn't get your name, from the lady from Peru for the question, but a very rightful and very impactful issue because gender has been an issue, especially with regard to AI algorithms and the biases in AI, whichever way we work in. And that's primarily because of the bias that exists in the input data. And if the data is not uh, uh, equitable in the sense that if data is biased, like for example, very typical examples are given that uh, AI models would treat engineers to be men and teachers to be women. So these biases, if we are aware of, that can be resolved to some extent. But this is a very basic level. The other biases that exist when it comes to gender and AI, like very often in India, what we've seen is that even in AI scaling, the number of people who undergo AI scaling and AI training, very often because of societal biases, it's the men and the boys who take the dominant share of uh, because of access to devices, because they have access to higher education. So all those biases come in. So we have a conscious plan within India that whenever we do talk of digital training and digital skilling, we try to balance it out and we try to have a proactive measures in order to encourage more women to take up uh, courses and take up AI-based skilling so that to ensure that we have a fair balance of that. Whichever data sets are used, how do we mitigate the, the biases which are there in order to ensure that uh, AI is gender neutral and AI is more equitable uh, for the whole population. So those are some measures which are taken, but yes, it will take a lot of time to train the models in order to ensure that they're aware of the biases and how to get rid of them. And that's the work that's part of the the ethical framework and the responsible assessments of AI solutions, wherein we address the biases coming in for gender or biases coming for race or biases coming for other diversity that exists in the world. So that's on the gender issue. And the collaborative part is again something which is very, very useful. And one of the themes which we have introduced in the, uh, for, the, for, uh, for the 2024 uh, chair presidency is with regard to collaborative AI for uh, building partnerships amongst various stakeholders. Like, how do we join hands? How do we share knowledge, share experience, share models, and together work on uh, building big solutions? In fact, Alan from the Secretariat very often talks about building a CERN for AI. So just like world community has come together to work for particle physics and advancement in high in uh, the CERN center, can we think of having a shared compute infrastructure? Can we sh think of having shared uh, data sets on which uh, research could be done? Can we think of sharing insights or sharing partnerships between 
AI researchers from across institutions. So that would really, really ensure that we work together collaboratively in the field of AI and develop AI for the betterment of humanity rather than just being always being aware of the biases or the bad things that can come from artificial intelligence. Thank you. Um, I think the second question uh, about further countries joining. Right, uh, maybe. Maybe um, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, yes, it was, it was not about further countries joining. Well, I can also mention that. Uh, so we do have a membership pro process, which is uh, well-defined and also described on the website. Uh, further countries are invited to to apply. Right now, the the intake for for 23 has been uh, has been closed, um, and there will be a next uh, next opening in in 24. Uh, so uh, watch the um, the GPI uh, website. Um, everything is uh, is explained there. Uh, the deadline is around uh, June or July. And um, uh, countries are expected to to uh, present a letter of intent uh, with uh, you know uh, their motivation to join uh, GPI as um, an initiative uh, committed to trustworthy AI. Uh, so that is the the possibility for for membership. And I would also like to. Um, you know, uh, react to uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Singh just uh, just mentioned. Um, yes, we, we have been uh, ta talking about the, the future perspectives of uh, GPI. Uh, you know, GPI has achieved a very significant uh, impact and Inma has mentioned uh, previously the, for, for instance, the detection mechanisms, uh, the obligation uh, by, uh, um, you know, uh, companies putting on the market uh, foundation models to actually uh, provide the detection mechanisms, which would allow us to understand that uh, something has been produced by that foundation model. That is uh, something which is uh, very significant and has already been uh, taken on board in, in some uh, countries' legislations. Um, and uh, I think GPI going forward wants to wants to uh, provide more and more impact. And uh, uh, I'm I'm um, really um, happy to hear that uh, that uh, India has this vision for uh, for the for the uh, new man, a new a new um, year and new presidency to lead the way of GPI to, towards, you know, pooling together uh, the resources. Basically, the, the idea comes from the, from the um, understanding that uh, today, uh, a lot of the R&D is concentrated uh, in, uh, in the hands of a few uh, large private companies and that um, the public uh, sector research um, is far behind and uh, uh, has a very limited uh, understanding of, um, of the new technological advances and uh, the, the spending from the public sector is, um, is uh, uh, fragmented uh, among, among uh, different uh, countries. So the idea, as, uh, uh, as, as um, Mr. Singh mentioned, uh, of GPI as a go-to place, as a place where uh, all the countries come together and uh, pool together their resources in data and in um, uh, you know, compute power, um, and also with perhaps some other uh, international networks which already exist, such as the um, worldwide LHC computing grid uh, for um, particle physics. Uh, this could be uh, this could bring um, uh, GPI even further on this ambition. So um, uh, um, uh, we do, of course, uh, want to part, uh, partner with private companies. That is, uh, that is uh, great. But we do also want to uh, bring together uh, public research institutions. And this is the model of the National AI Institutes, which I mentioned in my introductory speech. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have a question here. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Juraj Chorba. I'm uh, representing the government of Slovakia uh, from the EU. Um, I have uh, two questions, if I may. Uh, in your presentation, which was very helpful and very informative, thank you for that, you have mentioned that um, you are planning some kind of activities for the support of 
regulatory activities. Uh, uh, could you please be more specific? Uh, what are you planning? So that's the first question. And the second question relates to the India summit. So it's maybe a question to our uh, friends from India. Uh, my, uh, um, my question would be, uh, you have mentioned that you are planning to create or, or um, manage the summit in a way that it is the place where we go and come for, for um, um, the AI topic. Um, Slovakia is a non-member of GPA. Uh, we are considering a possible membership, but uh, my question is, uh, how open uh, will you be to uh, participation of uh, non-member non countries and how they can uh, effectively participate uh, at the India Summit? Thank you very much. So I will answer the first question. I believe the second is for Mr. Singh. So um, these workshops, the, the, what I mentioned regarding the contract laws regarding uh, AIIP, are planned to take place in incubator style. And if you go online and you look for this project, you'll see the person that is leading this, which is uh, Lee Tidrich, which is professor at Duke University. Um, and, and she will then be able to share uh, the schedules because as I mentioned, the projects seek specialists and the specialists are invited to work with us from any country. So if there are uh, projects in which you feel that some of your AI scientists and practitioners would really would like to contribute, uh, the projects are open for collaboration. And then I believe the second question was for India, for, the, for Mr. Singh, for Abhishek. Can uh, government delegations attend the, the summit in India? Uh, and, and like, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. I got the question. So, uh, so um, thank you for the question, Slovakia, and uh, and uh, for the interest in the summit. So, while the uh, way the GP is constituted, the ministerial and the various official engagements which will happen on the 13th and 14th will only be open to the existing member countries. And of course, the membership application, I don't know how quickly we can work about on approving the membership. But yes, there are the side events on the 12th. And we are, and there will be an exhibition which will be open to all uh, all guests, all members. So if you're wanting to come and visit, we, you can uh, write to us and we'll work out the modalities and uh, the sessions in which you'll be able to participate as a non-member. So that we are willing to look into it and uh, and we would also be showcasing, uh, there's a lot of interest in our Prime Minister himself said that uh, that if there are other countries who are coming, then we can showcase them our digital public infrastructure projects, how our other projects work, how we have done in AI and the side events and all in which we could participate. But yes, the ministerial and the steering committee and the executive committee, those formal events of GPA, they will be open only for the member countries. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, yes. we have. It's just a continuation to his second question. And uh, I just introduced myself. I'm Kamesh Shekhar. I'm from India. And um, yeah, it's a proud moment for us that we will be having the summit very soon. Um, I'm from the think tank called The Dialogue. We are based out of Delhi. And um, I just had a very uh, follow-up question to his is that like, and um, uh, um, Sir had actually mentioned that there will be side events and other opportunities. I just wanted to understand, like, as a think tank and as a civil society, how can we also take part in the summit and, like, what are the, you know, way forward that we could watch out for as the summit, like, you know, comes into picture. So that's just a question I had. Yeah. So uh, the details of side events will be up on the website very soon, hopefully by next week or so. And uh, we would welcome registrations for the side events from non-members also. So, and there are a lot of think tanks who are already uh, wanting to take part. There's a lot of interest from the industry. There's a lot of interest from the startup community. Uh, within India, we had a big meeting yesterday in which more than 50 people had participated. And they all have given various ideas with regard to what all we should be covering especially with regard to building consensus with regard to key issues that the world faces, especially for the advancement of artificial intelligence and other technologies. So we look forward for that. We have been getting very good response from all stakeholders, especially the G20 countries uh, and the countries beyond for our initiatives. In fact, I would like to just mention that even in the G20, as part of the Digital Economy Working Group, 
Uh, we, based on the request that we got from multiple countries, we hosted a global DPI summit in Pune in June. And that included a lot of countries outside the G20. So almost 50 countries took part who were not the members of G20 because they wanted to know about what all we have been doing in the digital space. And eight of those countries already signed MOUs with us for replication of some of the India stack solutions in their countries. And none of them were the G20 members. So similar approach will be here. So the official meetings would be open only for the members, but the non-official, the exhibition, the side events, the keynote talks, we are trying to get some keynote AI scientists and researchers who can come and deliver a keynote talk. So those will be available for uh, for people who are not officially a member of GPA also. Okay, and we have a question right next to you. Uh, thanks very much. Um, my name is Ben Graham Jones. I advise the Westminster Foundation for Democracy and Digital Divide uh, on Tuesday night technology and elections. Um, so I'm working on some email things. I think the mic is the not mic on. Is not working, is it, ben? Can't hear. No. no. There we go. I'll start again. Uh, my name is Ben Graham Jones. Uh, I advise the Westminster Foundation for Democracy, a UK public body um, around uh, democracy and elections, but especially uh, on issues pertaining to technology. Um, I understand that yeah, a big principle of GPA as well is that, that it's very much guided by the shared democratic principles of its members. Uh, and I'd be keen to know, you're know, moving forward into the Indian presidency, what the whether there's also plans to address um, you know, issues around um, AI, in election processes, both the challenges and the opportunities uh, moving into the year ahead. Well, from the uh, Max perspective, uh, we know that one of the major uh, bruising points of uh, generative AI and AI that has been misused is the risks to uh, democratic countries, the risks to the democracy in the world. So these cascades into various projects, not just the one because we believe that the pillars of the world is uh, democracy, uh, a welfare society that looks after its people and ensures uh, their well-being. So if you want me to look through all the other projects after the meeting and tell you which ones, the theme is running across various projects from responsible AI to data governance. For example, data governance in 2022 had a specific project on human rights. And that obviously comes from, you know, non-democratic uh, situations, yeah? So I can, I can talk to you after the, the session. Um, are there any other questions? I think we have reached uh, minus one minute. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Joichi, uh, Ida, and Mr. Abhishek Singh, and Kavita, Batia and our colleague uh, in Paris uh, at the OECD, Alan uh, Paik, for convening and, and being with us and presenting uh, our vision, our hopes for the future, and the singularity of this initiative, um, which uh, many times when people ask me what the GPA is, I always say, when you wonder if governments care about people, this is one of those. Um, they truly do. They truly do, and they do their best to really take the reins of our future and make sure that AI is for opportunity and for good and for welfare. And let's hope that we can achieve that. Thank you all for uh, coming to this session. Many thanks to those who connected online. And I uh, declare the session finished. Thanks very much for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Inma. Thank you.